everyone, Grant for the Flame Learning Channel. In the Flame 2021 products, a new Timeline FX management workflow was introduced in order to give you the most flexibility when performing any VFX grading or finishing work. This allowed you to organize and apply Timeline FX setups in a very interactive and user friendly way. So you now have a system where you can store multiple grades, manage multiple VFX setups and even a still store for grab references. There is so much potential and this workflow has been further enhanced with the Flame 2021.1 update. This video will focus on the basics of creating and applying Timeline FX setups as well as the overall implementation of the workflow to help you better understand how it works. And in the later videos, we'll expand into greater detail regarding organization, selectives, image comparisons and much more. This training is not footage specific, so please use your own media to follow along. Starting in the Timeline environment, I have a straightforward edit that already contains a few Timeline effects for my finishing sequence. To dig into a Timeline effects, you would select a segment and switch to the effects environment. Now you could be working on an effect or creating a grade and you would like to save these Timeline effects as reusable setups. So as part of the Timeline effects management workflow, you have a panel to the right known as the Explorer which is mainly dedicated to Timeline effects setups. Please note that this is not the media panel. So to create a Timeline effects setup, you can either grab the Timeline effects from the effects ribbon or from the storyboard thumbnail and drag it into the Explorer. A new Timeline effects setup is created and you are prompted to name it. You can give it a name or just leave it blank by pressing Enter. Unlike a clip that contains media, it's not mandatory to name a Timeline effects setup. To apply this to another shot in the sequence, simply choose the new shot and drag the Timeline effects setup to either the storyboard thumbnail or the viewport. So these are some of the gestural ways of saving and applying a Timeline effects setup and that's easy. Now there are a lot of other options to suit your working style and we'll come back to these workflows in a moment. But before we go any further, it is quite important to know how the Timeline effects setups are stored and managed in the Flame 2021.1 products. In previous versions, all the media and metadata were mixed together in the project's workspace and everything was always exposed whether you needed it or not. Objects would appear and disappear depending on what environment of Flame you were in and all these issues combined became a big point of confusion. So to help with clarity as well as offer new and improved workflows for all of you, as of version 2021, anything that is regarded as metadata is now separated out from the media panel. This refers to Timeline effects setups and grabbed reference images. So all the Timeline effects setups are now visible in the Explorer which is available everywhere in the Flame 2021.1 products. For example, looking at the Timeline environment, you can enable the Explorer using the Flame main menu or press Meta Command Escape. You can also gesturally access it with Control Swipe. This works in any view if you want to see the Explorer or not. So creating and applying Timeline effects setups is also available in the Timeline environment. There will be an extra video on how the Explorer works in each of the different interfaces. But the point I'd like to stress is that the setups are saved in a separate library known as the Timeline effects library. So in terms of grading and VFX, you have a focused area just for Timeline effects setups and it also introduces a new level of organization just for setups. So you can identify any Timeline effects setup or grabbed image reference without media getting in the way. Having said that, there are two exceptions where you may encounter a Timeline effects setup in the media panel. Firstly, you may see Timeline effects setups in a batch group or iteration when an old project has been restored or converted in Flame 2021.1. Secondly, 
we still support the workflow of sharing data via the shared libraries. So it is still possible to share media and timeline effect setups between projects using the shared library workflow. Now let's return back to the effects environment and look at the Explorer and timeline effect setups in a little more detail. So earlier, you created a timeline effect setup and it contained a thumbnail preview, a name if wanted, and a timeline effects that was stored in the setup. Now by dragging and dropping into the Explorer, the timeline effects setup was placed at the root or top level. If you want to organize your setups to match the way you like to work, you can create any type of folder structure you want. For example, you can create new folders using the context menu. I'll call it My Looks. You can then take the timeline effect setup and drag it into the folder. The folder structure can be simple with single folders or complex with multiple subfolder levels. It's really up to you. Now there are other ways of viewing the Explorer as well as filtering what you see, but that will be covered in the next video. For now, I want to first focus on the various aspects of creating timeline effect setups and then the details when applying them. So in terms of creation, you've already seen the gestural technique of either dragging from the timeline effects ribbon or dragging from the storyboard. Looking at the timeline effects setup in the Explorer, the thumbnail is normally based on the first frame of the shot. If you wanted to use a different frame as a thumbnail, you need to go to the frame you want, set the frame as the thumbnail icon, and then create the timeline effects setup. So that should make it easier to visually identify this particular setup. Now the timeline effects setup is not limited to one timeline effects per setup. In other words, if you had a shot with multiple timeline effects, you can select them both and create a new setup. The timeline effects icons will tell you what each setup contains. Finally, you've learned all the gestural methods of creating a timeline effects setup. But there is a menu based approach if you prefer. I'll adjust one of the timeline effects to create a difference. With the timeline effects selected, if you call up the context menu over the effects ribbon, you will see an option called Save to Explorer. When you choose this option, you can save your timeline effects setup at the top level of the library. But if you wanted it to be saved in relation to another setup or in a specific folder, you have two extra choices. Select another timeline effects setup regardless of where it sits in the Explorer and create a new one with the selected item option. The new timeline effects setup will be created right next to the original selection. If you were to select a folder instead of a setup, creating a timeline effects setup with the selected item would place the new setup within the selected folder. Finally, let's say you built a very organized folder structure for your timeline effects setups and you want to target a specific folder. You can obviously do this gesturally, but as an alternative using the context menu, you can choose the folders option and navigate to your destination folder for the timeline effects setup. So this gives you a few easy choices on how to build up your timeline effects library. And for those of you who love using keyboard shortcuts, you can save to the top level with Control Meta Z or next to the selected item with Control Meta X. One big bonus to show you is if you open the keyboard shortcuts editor and search for Explorer. I wanted to point out that there are also keyboard shortcuts to save to the top level and selected item but skip the naming if you don't want that extra step. Now it is also possible to create timeline effects setups that are specifically for selectives, but I'll cover that subject in an upcoming video. Moving on to applying timeline effects setups, similar to creating them, there is also the gestural ability 
to drag and drop setups onto various shots. You can drag and drop onto the current shot, or drag and drop the timeline effects onto any shot in the storyboard reel. If you wanted to apply the timeline effects setup to multiple clips, you need to select them first, and then drag and drop the timeline effects setup. Everything I have shown you with regards to the storyboard reel will also apply to the storyboard view. Another gestural way to apply a timeline effects to a shot is via the viewport. For example, you navigate to a shot and drop your timeline effects onto the viewport. This works the same as dropping setups onto the storyboard reel, however it is only focused on the current selection which is what you see in the viewport. So if you want to apply a timeline effects setup to a multi selection of shots in the storyboard, you drag and drop on the storyboard selection and not the viewport. So it's a very visual and intuitive way of working. Now there are multiple ways of using the effects environment with a sequence, and I want to highlight two workflows you could use with drag and dropping setups into the viewport. The first workflow is focusing on one shot at a time as you click through the shots in the storyboard. It does not matter if you are looking at the result view, or the storyboard context view, you are able to drag and drop timeline effects setups onto the viewport. The second workflow is having the entire sequence visible in the time bar, and you can view the entire sequence in the viewport without touching the storyboard. This can also work very well, but it needs to be set up correctly in order to drag and drop to the viewport in this workflow. For example, using the player pull down menu, choose either the timeline or storyboard range. Ensure you are looking at the storyboard context view in the viewport. When you scrub the sequence, every shot is available under the cursor. Now when it comes to drag and drop on the viewport, two criteria need to be met. Firstly, you need to see the shot in the viewport, and secondly, the shot you see in the viewport needs to be the primary selection. If you scrub to a shot and it is not selected, the drag and drop in the viewport will be prevented. So to ensure that the shot you see is always selected, you can do one of two things. By holding SHIFT and dragging the time bar, will automatically select the shot you scrub to. The second option is if you want the selection on scrub to be active constantly, go to the Preferences menu and choose the Tools TLFX tab. Under the Effects time bar, enable AUTO SELECT on scrub. When you close the preferences and scrub to any shot, it will be displayed in the viewport and it is automatically selected. With both criteria met, you can easily drag and drop a timeline effects setup into the viewport. And as a small reminder in case you missed it, drag and drop to the storyboard still works in any workflow. I'll go ahead and switch back to a single shot workflow with segment range, and we'll look at the last workflow of applying timeline effects. This is probably the fastest way of applying a timeline effects setup to a shot. Just double click it. And this applies the timeline effects to the current selection. This is very handy for quick swapping effects or trying different grades or VFX. Once again, this only works for the current selection unless you drag the setup to a multi selection of shots in the storyboard reel. Now, for those of you using a grading panel, a lot of this functionality is mapped to the panel, and please refer to the online documentation for further information. The last topic before moving on to the next video is how to manage the timeline effects setups with projects and archives. Well, the great news is that the timeline effects setups are still part of the project, so they can be archived as well as transferred between systems using the Explorer in the Media Hub. For anyone restoring a project from an older version of Flame, any existing timeline effects setups located in the workspace 
will be moved to the Explorer, which contains the Timeline Effects library. Any organizational structure around the original Timeline Effects setup will be rebuilt to maintain what you had in the earlier versions of Flame. As I mentioned earlier, you may find a Timeline Effects setup in an old batch group or iteration, but this still can be used in the current project. Once again, please check the online documentation for more detailed information. In the next video, you'll take a deep dive into organizing the Timeline Effects setups in the Explorer, as well as filtering the setups to streamline the Explorer as you work. Don't forget to check out the other features, workflows and enhancements to the Flame 2021.1 update. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel and click the bell to be notified for future videos. Thanks for watching and hope to see you soon.